in this segment, I'm going to discuss with you what happened um, beginning on Saturday's segment. And in Saturday's um, segment, we discussed the plan of organization. We were on Amendment 2 of the plan of organization. And Amendment 2 uh, reads, to provide Republican committees a method for participation by conference call and permit taking action without a meeting provided there is unanimous written consent by all of the members of the committee. So we start off the debate and there is um, fierce opposition uh, to this change. And the first person that speaks in opposition is a um, is a wonderful, wonderful lady um, named Zane Bunn, who is a resident of Wake County. Which, if you're not familiar with North Carolina, Wake County is the um, the county that the capital city of Raleigh is in. And uh, Zane Bunn um, is, is is a lady who I first met at the 2012 um, North Carolina GOP convention, and uh, she's a very friendly and personable lady. Um, I, I actually um, attended a central committee meeting um, as a guest uh, because in my tenure of uh, North Carolina politics, I was on the executive committee. But not the central committee. But um, you know, she uh, she she let me sit in on the meeting as a guest. Um, I always be very appreciative for her um, for allowing me to do that. Um, and let's see, what was I going to say? Um, now, 2012, I met her, and then, but 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 2013. As you're about to hear in this soundbite is really where I think she um, she she really bursted on the scene as a strong conservative, very Tea Party friendly activist. As you're going to hear in this soundbite, and a special thank you to Pundit House for providing me with this soundbite. This is from the 2013 North Carolina Republican Party Convention in Charlotte, and this is at the Executive Committee uh, debate. <clears throat> Here we go. As you can see, uh, in the 2013 convention, not a lot of business got done because one, we we had an election for chairman and vice chair, and that vote takes a lot of time. But number two, um, a lot of delegates um, discovered at the convention that there was way way too many um, speeches candidate speeches, various uh, speakers from the Republican Party. It was almost more of a uh, CPAC style of convention rather than a more formal business uh, convention. And that was what Zane Bunn um, very, very effectively pointed out there. Now, um, uh, on this next soundbite that I'm going to play for you, Zane Bunn is very, very much opposed um, to uh, the amendment allowing conference calls in place of regular face-to-face -face meetings when doing um, 
business on the various committees of the North Carolina Republican Party. Uh, here we go. Hat tip Bobby Coggins of Macon Media on this soundbite as well as all the other soundbites I'm going to play for you in this segment. Here we go. In principle, I support operating in the 21st century. So therefore, I support the opportunity that we have to use all means necessary to conduct good, accurate, complete, and timely business. Many committees on various levels of our party have the opportunity to conduct in-person meetings and also conference call meetings. Uh, there's, there's an additional opportunity, I presume, to vote by email. Um, I do not feel that the execution of this action is handled equally and fairly uh, and the same each time. Therefore, in, I will vote against this proposed change as a way to illustrate that anyone who is a chair of a committee should exercise the utmost care to complete a conference call or an email vote if that is the wish of the committee to expedite business. I will, I will do so to urge them to carry it out if this passes in the absolute most um, fair process for each member. Uh, raise your hand if you have participated in a conference call where you were unable <coughs> to hear all the points in an accurate and complete fashion. Apparently the rest of you have never participated in conference calls. Thank you. Okay. Now, in that particular um, raise your hand um, if you had trouble hearing on a conference call uh, I think of the 600 delegates that were on the convention floor that morning I'd say maybe five or ten um, raised their hands and had trouble listening ah uh, but our next soundbite is from uh, Dr. Ada Fisher Dr. Ada Fisher Fisher uh, serves as the National Committee Woman for the uh, North Carolina GOP um, as a auxiliary office of the Republican National Committee. And here's what she has to say about this amendment. Uh, I am, a, I, I really believe in conference calls. My only hang up is that I don't think that people should take the votes on conference calls because you miss the chance to interact with people and you don't often get a chance to have all your questions answered and discussed. I will go by the will of body, but I will oppose this because I don't think that votes should be taken on conference calls. I think people need the ability to sit and interact with each other and discuss these things, and you can't do that on a conference call. Sure, thanks for generating. Very good analysis, uh, Dr. Fisher. Um, she's right. Yeah, not not everyone has a chance to speak, and people on the other end of the line could be uh, shy to speak. And of course, there's always that fuzzy gray area that suggests the person on the other end may not be who they say they are. And the thing is, at least when you have in-person meetings, you can actually see the person that you're meeting with. Uh, and then we have the chair of the planned organization committee. Uh, this is the uh, gentleman who ultimately decided to put this amendment uh, into the convention program for the delegates to vote on. Uh, here's a little piece of what he has to say, and unfortunately, I, I think it's kind of a disrespectful stab at Zane Bunn. Here we go. And my interpretation of the vote that was taken earlier uh, by the delegate is that most of you who participated in conference calls have been able to hear just fine, and were able to participate just fine, and I think it makes sense for us to, as the delegate say, said, get into the 21st century. Okay, <clears throat> now, what did I say? We had 600 delegates, right? And um, in these committees, you have planned organization, you have the credentials committee, you have the platform committee, 
and the Resolutions Committee. Then uh, you have the Central Committee, and you have, I would assume, maybe the county chairs get together and have a conference call. I'm not sure on that. But uh, on these committees, you have an average of 10 to 15 people. So there are about five committees. And a lot of times, uh, so 15 times 5 is 75. But uh, there may be some overlap. In other words, you may have one, one you may have uh, Jane serves on platform committee, but she also may serve on resolutions committee. Or Jane might be a member of the central committee as a, um, as a chairwoman for district one, but she also heads up the plan of organization committee, and that's that whole overlap concept there. Um, so, Mr. Strack, <laughs> uh, we want to make things more difficult for delegates to get resolutions passed at the state convention. But in terms of committee meetings, <laughs> we say, let's just, hey, let's just have some informal conference call where people can listen on the other end in their birthday suit if they want to. Or, <laughs> they could, even worse, could they, could be they pretend that they are somebody they are not. Okay. <clears throat> and then we have what I've been alluding to um, a couple minutes ago, the security issue. Here's this clip. This is my first time here, so uh, I am Lisa Martin from Brunswick County. As a person with a security background, and I'm sure there's other here, I would just caution persons on conference calls of delicate natures. Uh, this is you know, in opposition to the other party, conversation, strategy, whatever, um, it's very easy to record, take, have somebody else in the room on a conference call and others not know it. Just take that into consideration. Sure, thanks, Jill Lady. Mr. Chairman, Seal Wasserman, Craven County, call the question. The motion previous question is a parliamentary technique. Uh, it is a motion. It will require a second and it will require a two-thirds vote, but it is a motion to end debate and move into an immediate vote. Uh, so this time, the gentleman has moved the previous question. Is there a second to the motion previous question? The gentleman stays. Okay. And you can see there, uh, the reason why I played that particular clip for you was to show you a little bit more of how conventions run and that sort of thing. Um, now, uh, this particular amendment on the plan of organization uh, was approved. Uh, and what happens was you have your eyes, the, 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 you know, people vote yes, say aye, or they'll vote nay, they'll say nay for no. And I voted no. And this amendment was approved, unfortunately, overwhelmingly, with a um, yes vote. Now, here we are on Saturday morning, okay? Uh, we start off at 9 a.m. We have uh, the various judicial candidates speak for about 30 minutes, okay? And then uh, we have the report of the Credentials Committee. Um, and that takes about 5 to 10 minutes. But then, of course, we have to have uh, the verification of credentials, the, you know, the various county chairs will come up and debate the credentials and they'll have to go to the credential staff, they have their little table um, to the left of the stage, main stage area of the convention hall. Okay, so we get to business, actual business, um, you know, this planned organization debate at, at, at 10 o'clock, okay? Now, it was not even 15 minutes later that this knucklehead nincompoop says this. I have the gentleman for his motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we adjourn until 2 p.m. so that everyone has an opportunity to make the breakout session timely. Gentlemen, please state his name and county. Right. John McClain, McMurray County. Chair, thanks to the gentleman. Is there a second to the motion to adjourn? So, you have that motion to adjourn. <clears throat> now, Here's the thing. So it's 10:15, right? The breakout sessions are scheduled to start at 10:45, and they are only maybe 
if you're if you walk really really slow like um two feet an hour maybe it might take you five minutes to get to the your breakout session okay and you know uh let's say you had a really really big breakfast that morning um you might have to have to go into the bathroom and take a number two okay that might take you mm, five to maybe if you really really had a big breakfast or you maybe had a big dinner the previous night from Taco Bell and I like Taco Bell but I know what it does to your digestive system the day after uh, it might take you maybe 10 minutes to take a dump okay so that would still leave you according to my calculations 18 minutes to get to the breakout session which starts at 10:45. So do you see how ridiculous Mr. McLean's motion is to adjourn? So, uh the motion was you had your yay or nay vote. It was very evenly divided. So the next thing we did was went to a standing vote. And myself and pretty much everybody from uh, New Hanover County, uh, as well as my good friend Jay Vix of Brunswick County, um, stood in opposition. I was very, uh, I was very proud of the New Hanover delegation because um, we definitely have some swing voters and difference of opinion in that county. Uh, but I was very proud of them for agreeing with me on this. And the good news is, is that. Mm, this year's convention, 2015, uh, you will have from 9 until 12 one continuous business session. You you won't have from 9 to 10:30 a business session because it just it takes too long to go through credentials. And you know if you have to uh, go, through, go if you only have 15 minutes of business and it takes you so long to get through the credentials process and then you have to stop again doesn't make any sense okay so <clears throat> um, so we get to the Saturday afternoon session and what what happens um, first at on Saturday afternoon uh, we're only on point of organization okay we still have the platform and the resolutions to get to um, so uh, Michael Lyons who is a delegate from Macon County which is um, just a little bit west of where we were, um, maybe half hour drive from Cherokee. He, he was a local guy. Um, he suggested that the um, amendments three through seven uh, should be passed as one bundle in order to expedite, you know, quicken the business session a little bit. <clears throat> So we can make sure that we can actually get to all the business at the convention, which, uh, <laughs> at least in the um, the previous uh, three conventions that I went to, <laughs> did not get done. Um, so we pass amendments three through seven as one big chunk. Okay. So I'm just going to read you read to you what they are very briefly and discuss them. Okay. Amendments three and four uh, said to provide a method for county organizations to delay annual precinct meetings and county conventions in the event of circumstances beyond the control of the county party and circumstances meaning uh, pretty much meaning inclement weather um, amendment five states uh, to clarify the election of delegates to district conventions in those counties that span more than one congressional district. And yes, this um, in several counties in North Carolina, for example, Lenore County, uh, the county seat is Goldsboro. Uh, Lenore County is about 50 miles south and east of Raleigh. It's in three congressional districts. Um, so my um, good friend the county chairman there, Michelle Nix, is very busy uh, going to meetings of the 1st District, the 3rd District, and the 7th District. And then uh, another example is New Hanover County uh, down in the southeast 
the coastal part of North Carolina. Um, and you know, uh, one of the very few counties in North Carolina that actually grow palm trees. Uh, New Hanover County is in two districts, the third and the seventh. Amendment six, on the other hand, deals with uh, say states to clean up the language in section 7a and to provide for the automatic removal of members of Republican organization committees in the event of their conviction of a felony following election to such committee. Amendment 7, the final amendment to the plan of organization, says to provide additional time for notices of county conventions and provide a method for relieving counties of the cost to provide such notice. And this would change changes uh, 10 days notice to 15 days notice of the um, uh, publishing the convention notice. And this amendment, uh, it passed and it, um, it also, there's a new waiver process that a county chairman will, would be allowed to go through if they fail to provide a convention notice before 15 days is up. And the convention notice must be in the local newspaper. Um, which, which I think the waiver process is a good thing because the county chairmen are very busy working their nine to five day jobs. Most of them have a family. Uh, but then there's also the whole thing about planning a convention. Uh, you know, you need a space to have it in and you need to um, make, make sure you have some elected officials and uh, if it's an election year, some candidates to speak at the convention. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of boring. <laughs> um, now, my prediction on Amendment 7 is that it's probably going to be changed again in the next couple of years uh, because the whole sentence in the um, in this uh, particular section of the planned organization says that the convention notice must be published in a newspaper. And the thing about it is, is the newspaper is, well, I don't think I have to tell you that's going the way of the dinosaur in our uh, American society today. And more and more people are reading the newspaper and they're not really, um, as far as classified ads, that's more of a Craigslist or an eBay kind of thing, you know. I, not very many people say, "Ooh, I'm going to go online to the Orlando Sentinel newspaper and I'm going to look at the classifieds." You know, it's like you just don't really think of uh, reading newspaper online and doing that sort of thing. Um, so a good alternative, and maybe this at the Sears convention or in the next couple of years, um, whoever uh, chairs the PU, uh, the Planetization Committee, um, alternatives to this will be to put in there um, and uh, emailing the registered Republicans in your in the particular county that you're having the convention is an option, and also uh, making a public post on Facebook. Um, starting uh, an official Facebook page saying this is the New Hanover County Republican Party Facebook page. Anybody can like us and we're going to post, we'll always post announcements on here uh, so that if you're scrolling around in your Facebook feed you're going to see that hey we have a convention on Saturday March 14th at the county courthouse. Um, uh, however back to that email thing um, at least I know for a fact because I just went through a um because I'm uh I just moved to Florida about what's it now been four 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 months or so. Um I just went through a class about a month ago, uh, in the Republican Party down here, um, in Seminole County and um the instructor told me that um, email addresses, um, at least in the state of Florida, are not part of a voter registration list. And, um, but in my opinion, that is really something that should be changed because the thing about it is election law, when you're, um, you know, when, when you're in September, October, right before uh, uh, 2014 or 2016 election, uh, you can only really call people or go door to door. And the thing about calling people is, well, there's a couple things. One, 
a lot of people are dumping their landline phone and they're going to cell phones. And the thing about a cell phone number is it's not public record. And, uh, and then, of course, there's always that people don't like to answer their phone. But in emails, I think a lot of people are a little bit more willing because email is something you don't have to, you can ant, you can click and open your email box whenever you want, 24 hours a day. And a phone call, you just never know when you're going to get it. And uh, if you're sitting down eating dinner or watching your favorite TV show, you're not going to want to answer the phone. Uh, so that's my take on the whole thing. Time we're going to look at the debates on nominating people to the county board of convention uh, board of conventions that would be fun no the county board of elections now should the state gop chairman do that or should the county gop chair do that and think about this when you answer that question you have 100 counties in the state of north carolina do you really think that the state chairman has the time to really know and find the best candidates? Yeah, I don't think so either. So let's listen to what this gentleman from Nash County, uh, this uh, Rocky Mountain is the county seat. Let's see what he has to say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. amendment is not necessary. Well then, I guess you think the opinion of 700 convention delegates who drove to the far remote western corner of North Carolina and paid double the convention fees from last year is not necessary either. How dare you say that? Let's continue with the sound bites. Uh, it's my understanding that this amendment was driven by the experience of one county out of a hundred. Um, so you can imagine picking board of election members for a hundred counties is a pretty uh, difficult task. It takes a lot of time and effort. Well then, that is all the more reason for the county chair rather than the state chair to appoint people. Isn't it Mr. Strack? Let's see more of what he has to say. 
uh, and the chairman got it right at least 99 times out of 100, if not 100 out of 100. Uh, so I would not encourage this group to amend our, what is our Constitution. Oh, she, it is our Constitution. And you must think, oh, gee, I just don't like all these new people coming to the state conventions every year. Darn those stinking tea partiers. Ugh. And, of course, we have the following. Gentlemen, please say his name. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mike Piccarelli, uh, Guilford County. Uh, looking at brief time, we've had to read it as well as some of the language of the small print. I move to refer back to the My thoughts exactly. Another refer back to committee. And this, uh, this, uh, was first voted with a voice vote. It was pretty even, evenly divided. And then a standing vote was taken. And, and I, um, like I usually do, I voted no. I wanted this to be voted on today, okay? Now, now we're going to look at the issue of weighted voting. And uh, it's a gentleman, uh, name is Daniel Rufty from Mecklenburg County, the Charlotte area. And Daniel Rufty is a very good friend of mine. He, as my opinion, is a very true, strong, conservative Republican. And if we had... Um, about 13 more of him on the Central Committee, we would be doing really well in North Carolina. Uh, and as you can see in this next soundbite, the uh, executive board on the stage that day is a little bit uh, befuddled, or they're a little bit um, uh, confused by what Daniel Rufty is uh, proposing in, in, uh, initially. It appears then that the gentleman is wishing to amend Article 7, Section A, uh, Paragraph 2, uh, or Subsection 2, uh, Paragraph C. Is that, is that it? Point of information, why, was the, why were the delegates not given a full copy of the plan of organization? Uh, it, 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 the chair has no understanding that other than, than it is available to all delegates on the website. Uh, the chair would assume, would assume the answer is cost, uh, and being cost prohibitive, and delegates have the opportunity to print their own copies and bring them with them. Well, the copy that I have says, that says. Okay. And then you have uh, a little bit more explanation on this weighted voting issue from uh, convention chair Billy Miller. Uh, for those of you who have been around uh, the process for a long time, uh, there's a weighted vote system for the election of chair and vice chair where every, every person is allowed to vote the entire voting street for their county. For example, if Mecklenburg County was allotted 50 delegates, but only one showed up, that one delegate can cast 50 votes on behalf of Mecklenburg County. It's a weighted voting process, uh, which has been here as long as the chair has been, been involved. Okay, our next sound fight uh, begins with the convention chair, and then we have Daniel Rufty uh, give his point on this particular issue. Again, according to the plan of organization, uh, Article 8, Section A, Paragraph 3, proposed amendments to the plan not mailed to the State Executive Committee 30 days prior to the convening of the State Convention must receive a two-thirds vote of the delegates present and voting at any State Convention. So uh, uh, this, this motion would require two-thirds uh, in order to pass. This amendment will require two-thirds in order to pass. Uh, the Chair assumes that, that uh, the Commission does wish to discuss this. Therefore, the Chair will once again uh, exercise his authority to limit debate to five minutes per side, uh, first recognizing the maker of the motion for time not to exceed two minutes. If, you, if everyone remembers the Convention last year, we spent three hours trying to solve the confusion with this weighted voting. I mean, literally three hours. As we all know we only have so much time to debate different things at this Convention. 
And again, this is Dan Rufty, uh, Mecklenburg County, that's speaking. I don't think we need to be spending three hours trying to explain to people this very confusing way of voting. Um, the, the chair actually called it voodoo magic last year, if y'all all remember. It's a, a crazy way the computer calculates each of these delegates. No one clearly understands it. There's no transparency. There's no you know, clarity in the voting. I think that I spent $75 to come here. I think my vote should count equally as anybody else here. Right on, Daniel. Right on. Uh, I think that we need to get rid of this weighted voting. It's very confusing, very time confusing. Time, it's not time uh, confusing. It takes so much time to explain to people. We need to go to, you want to show up, then you get a vote. If you don't show up, then you don't get a vote. That's that simple. Okay, I have to warn you that now we have the opposition, and the following person I would describe as a grade A douche bag. Okay, so I just want to warn you ahead of time as I play this sound bite. Let's we'll say his name in county, please. Cameron Willis, Henderson County. I'm speaking against this motion. It is an issue we have considered from time to time over the last 40 years since I've been attending conventions. It's a point of equity to allow people to have the votes they earned by their performance, registration or however, and not uh, to favor those who are geographically nearest the city of the convention. Yay for the clapping seals! Now. Let me ask this gentleman something here. Uh, but shouldn't the, per the person who actually spent money on the delegate fee, as well as money for gas, food, and lodging, and then time off from work? <laughs> yes, some of us do actually work weekends. Shouldn't their vote count more than the person who decided to just take the easy way out and just go to their county convention and then just say, well, I'll call it a day and just... Nah, state convention? Please, I'm not going to go to that. <laughs> Continue. The effort required to come to convention, the expense required to come to convention, varies very greatly with how far you have to travel. And so, if Graham County has earned the votes in the conventions of Moorhead City, they have a right to catch the votes they have earned. Vice versa, if the convention is in the far west, the east has the right to the same equalizing provision. It is not difficult to do the calculation in simple proportion as taught in uh, junior high school math. It is understandable that people don't obfuscate or say wrong things about it. Now I'm going to take one other point to make personal privilege to say I'm offended that this matter is being brought up in this way and not labeled for what it was. <laughs> I'm offended that the person introducing it did not go through the usual mechanism of going through the Planet Organization Committee, and I'm offended that they did not present a written statement of what the motion they want to make. Thank you. <sighs> boy, oh boy, oh boy. This guy is well the following. Ooh, out of control, out of control. <laughs> Yay, more clap and cheer. Thank you, guys and gentlemen. I'd like to move to refer this to the committee. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. Wheel of Fortune bankrupt sound. <laughs> Okay, uh, then 
Uh, fortunately, we have a man who really did a good job with this whole refer back to committee BS. Here we go. Uh, Okay, so uh, there's a motion made to refer back to committee. It, uh, we have the yay and the nay vote, which is evenly divided. And then, so we do a standing vote, and I voted no. Uh, but unfortunately, this motion on the uh, weighted voting was uh, referred back to committee. And so we will see. Uh, what will happen with that at this year's convention and if it may not make it out of the uh, uh, Matty Lawson likes to call the committee uh, the black hole sometimes because some of these uh, changes to the plan of organization or some of these resolutions uh, never make it out of committee so we shall see uh, uh, coming up and now we're going to talk to you about the platform and no, I'm not talking about the platform of your blue suede shoes. I'm talking about the platform. In other words, what does the North Carolina Republican Party stand for, okay? Uh, are they for traditional marriage, or are they for same-sex marriage? Are they for abortion, or are they against abortion? So that essentially is what the platform is. And so now we have, uh, here we have Mary Jo Shepard, the chairwoman of the platform committee, is going to explain a few things. It really included all the values and principles of the current platform, the 2013 platform. We didn't really want to change that much, we just wanted to make it easier for you all to access. Um, and I think we really hit that. Um, if you'll notice the platform, you look at last year's versus this year's, we also have a brand new layout. That again was uh, a strike. <laughs> the family feud strike. She, she was saying nothing was really taken out. Right, yeah, like I really buy that. <clears throat> Okay, and then we have another, uh, more Mary Jo Shepard. And one thing that really guided us is that it's a picture frame, okay? What goes in the picture is legislation. Um, we do want the platform to be a, a legislative document, it's not a bill. Um, it's the, the picture frame on which we put our values and principles. The legislature, their job is to, to make the legislation. So we kind of consider it as a framing mechanism for our values and principles. So with that in mind, I'm going to go over the platform. Now then, we have some dialogue with the uh, convention chairman and a delegate from Beaufort County. See if I can find that sound bite. There we go. First work again. The motion comes uh, is on the adoption of the platform as presented. Because the motion comes from committee, uh, no second is required. Uh, chair assumes at this point there will be some uh, discussion on the platform as proposed. So uh, we'll open the floor for questions or discussion. Mr. Chairman, I move to commit. Uh, to uh, refer to committee. Uh, the gentleman was not recognized. Recognize the gentleman. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion for uh, Keith Kidwell, Beaufort County. Make a motion for what I believe would be a correction. In Article 10, Paragraph 2, it reads democratic in two parts. We are not a democracy. We are a constitutional representative republic. Okay, I, 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 I went a little long with that segment. There was a Another refer back to committee there. That's where the Pac-Man noise came in there. 
Ah, uh, let's see. A lot of a lot of clips to play, and I'm trying to keep myself organized here. Just bear with me, folks. Uh, this one is um, what a uh, point of information. A guy asked a question: What things were point taken out? Uh oh. I tell you what, folks, these committee people, I, they, they just think that you and I are so stupid. They they take out um, things about uh, amnesty, toll roads, and, and a few other things, too. And it's just, uh, they, uh, then they present the platform, and they think you're so stupid, and you won't know that they took out amnesty and toll roads. It's, it's just uh, ridiculous. Um... Let's see here. What was my next uh, clip? Here we go. Happy to the National Security, National Policy Article 10. We'll call it paragraph 10. Uh, and to read once again, we oppose any form of amnesty for those who, by intentionally violating the immigration law, by intentionally violating the immigration law, disadvantage those who have obeyed it. Granting amnesty only rewards and encourages more law breaking. Is there a second to the throw of them? Recognize the gentleman the chair. Thanks, gentlemen. Uh, the motion is, uh, the amendment is moved and second, and the chair will assume there will be discussion. Uh, the chair will limit the debate once again to three minutes per side, recognizing the maker of the motion for time not to exceed two minutes. Mr. Chairman, this is one of the things that was deleted from our platform last year. gentleman was uh, Steve Radner of uh, Beaufort County with that really really good very solid um, amendment um, addressing the Republican Party's 
uh, well, it should be a staunch opposition to amnesty. Now you're going to hear, uh, here's our uh, Mary Jo Shepherd, who will tell you that, oh no, we can't do this. Delegates wishing to speak in opposition to the proposed amendment, recognizing the chair of the platform for time not to exceed two minutes. Um, I really don't want to put this in here. The, the only one thing I would say is that um, in an effort to go back to principle, instead of creating legislative issues here, um, we did put in here that in article, the first part of Article 10, strength only exists when our and in, need, in doing that, we mean that the this is a cover-up. Or it should be secure and we leave it to the legislature to make the law, whether it's am not amnesty, whether it's securing the you know, putting up a fence, uh, whatever we're going to do, leave it to them to do that. Um, this is the principle. We want to secure borders, and we want to make sure the integrity of your citizenship and my citizenship is protected at all costs. Oh, yes, just leave it to the old legislature. Huh. They don't need anybody to, uh, they don't need the voters to help them, uh, tell them what to do, or they don't need to listen to the people. Hmm. Sorry, Mrs. Shepard, I'm just not buying that. Um, now we have, uh, this is, uh, Craig Collins from Gaston County, and, and he's running for, uh, state GOP chairman this year, and he makes a very good case for a more open dialogue between the platform committee and the delegates attending the convention. All right, Craig. Craig, Jim Rogers, just one information. Craig Collins, Gaston County. I asked the chair, and it's for regarding this committee, it could be for any of the other committees as well. Uh, after the last convention, one of the things that really was attempted to be accomplished and requested was that we publish this stuff far enough in advance that people can review it and contact the committees and make sure that these matters are fleshed out in advance so we don't have these long debated issues on, on the details. Do you have a half point in Yes, sir. And so I asked the, the chair to, to let us know of these committees, how many of these issues that are being raised had been proposed to these committee chairmen ahead of time so they could be prepared to address them and respond to them. 